Vellum gathers materials, making trip after trip, each time getting closer to his goals. However, the resistance of the Catalysm never lets up. He has slain monsters he once thought immortal, discovered new horrors, and cut them down. And his fear of the dark of this destroyed world is starting to melt away. Even before we reach our goals and forge a new spear, Vellum has become powerful. Welcome back to Cataclysm, dark days ahead. My journey as Vellum, aspiring Archmage of the Apocalypse. Before us, before Vellum, lies a very specific new challenge, fungaloids. We have an understanding that a fungaloid would be a creature of probably some sort of eldritch makeup that's because of how mycelium spreads is going to be a highly infectious creature and we have proof right here of that highly infectious nature a fungal zombie if this thing can take over the flesh of what was once a human altered by some sort of black ooze that can keep these things alive i can only imagine what it's capable of doing to us on top of that, we also have a Shocker Zombie and its little hack attracted from its darkness nearby as well. We still want to get to this recycling center, but we also need to investigate this. I want to see how tough this Shambler is. It says that it is impractically immobile. We are going to turn off safe mode and we're going to slowly approach taking a few swings at the fungal zombie it goes down easily too easily as we take a swing at the fungaloid shambler our fears are instantly lived out spores released from the fungaloid shambler and the ground converted to fungal floor we're gonna take a step up and you know what we are going to deal with this the proper way we're going to take the wand of fireballs take it out and with one fireball both the fungal floor and the fungaloid itself are on fire is it going to burn to death no it's not with a handful of magic missiles oh actually even with a handful of magic missiles okay you asked for it we take it out and there we go yes we actually can see a living spore cloud, the size of a ballad, a bald fist wafting around in the air. No, that's not acceptable. With another fireball, we destroy the fungaloid, destroy the fungal floor and the, the spore clouds. So, taking care of one shambler, took us three fireballs. We do see that. We have uh, caused a little bit of a raging fire now. Because of oh, and as we try and step away into the darkness, we have now seen what the shocker is capable of as its balls lightning up in its form and releases an arc of lightning near us, barely missing us as we hear a crash nearby. Okay, we need to move faster now. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to use phase to get some distance as lightning is sh blasting through the ground around us. Well, this is definitely a problem. Let's take a moment to take stock of our situation. So we have a shocker zombie capable of shooting massive bolts of lightning at us. We have a flesh raptor, which is much, much, much faster than us, even if we start running. Um, and it's going to just kind of peck at us, but it can't do a lot of damage. We have a grappler zombie, which might actually be one of the biggest threats in this horde here, because if it gets a hold of us, we're not going to be able to continue to run. And then behind us, we have a feral human. And um, unfortunately, not a lot of known terrain. There is a building nearby. What is this? Uh, let's see. It is a house and there's a regional school behind us as well. So the two big threats that we need to get rid of are the grappler zombie and the Shocker Zombie, and Vellum knows how to do that. We're going to immediately whip out the Wand of Fireballs again, which lets them get a little bit closer, and we are going to run, activate the Wand of Fireballs, ignore the Flesh Raptor attacking us, and we're going to aim it kind of towards the back here. 
as the fireball hits, it takes out the flesh raptor and hits several other of the zombies. The grappler zombie itself still standing, and so does the shocker. We are still running. We're going to take another step back or two. Pull out our spear. Take out the feral. And I think they've lost track of us. We're just that quiet. We are going to pick out the wand of fireballs again because... I want to take to get rid of this thing. Is that going to be the best shot? We're going to really line this one up here. I think there will be the best as we hit every single one of them with the fireball tearing through. And you know what? Screw it. Another one. Can we hit more? We can. We go right there. And with another fireball from our wand, we destroy them. There's only a few left. Wait, what is that? A bruiser zombie. Uh, I don't really want to be close to the bruiser. Well, we don't have a choice now. We are going to phase out of this grip. And, uh, let's see. Do we have anything that we can use, really? We can attempt the photon beam, but it mostly just lost concentration. Paramilitary zombie is bleeding. The bruiser zombie is damaged. But one hit from that bruiser zombie is going to probably very much hurt us. We might actually just... I have an idea. I have an idea. We are going to run to the car here, open the door, and close the door behind us. As we made a dash for the nearby building, elves descended on us, feral elves but we did manage to get inside. Oh, and there's more elves taking another one down. We are so out of breath, so unable to keep going. We need to find a, a space right now, grab a can of tuna, that we can just catch our breath. Okay, here should work. But we're not one to back down from a challenge. I want to clear those out. I can't leave such a dangerous horde behind. We're going to use this window here. Lure them in. They're slow when, the, when they're trying to cross the window. Use the sound of me smashing corpses to bring them in closer. We need to find out where that bruiser went. That is the one that I'm current. Oh, the bruiser died, apparently. Maybe got trapped under the car. Not sure. They got another, another feral. These ferals are slowly whittling me down with those rock throws. And behind us, we created a disluted devourer from the corpses. We can't allow that. We send out a fireball into the center of them as I just want to catch that devourer on fire and clear out its friends. And then we're going to go in. Immediately leapt towards us and grabbed us shit um we are going to phase away from this grab this one seems strong swing after swing into it and we're already running out of stamina it is bleeding but we have taken so many hits okay we're going to phase a no we're not honestly we it did grab us just before we got into the window as we struggle and struggle to get free using the window as cover we slice it down and just as our breath is literally leaving us we could not have fought for a minute longer. Okay, let's let's take a look at our wounds. Nothing is bleeding. Good. Okay, we're going to actually put some antiseptic on our head because it, it should help us heal just a little bit faster. Check to see. Yeah, there's some medical gauze here. Uh, that's about it. Okay, step back out here. Definitely destroy that corpse of that devourer. This was more than we bargained for. And one of the first times where we really were in a serious amount of threat again. Another one of those wretched hatcheries up north. The amount of special zombies is getting to be as common enough to, to be a significant problem. 
I'll dismember this acidic zombie, make sure it doesn't get back up. Check around real quick. Just a little bit of food. That'll be helpful. Let's check our situation. So our knife spear almost shattered again. Our chainmail hauberk is heavily damaged. Slightly damaged. Um, and that's about it. Okay, so we're going to have to keep an eye on our our knife spear because it's not meant for the taking this much of a beating. It is an improvised weapon after all. We really do need to get... Oh, hey, there's a bottle of antibiotics here. Hell yes. Uh, we really do need to get a better spear going, our steel spear. Oh, and as we try and head back towards the recycling center, another Fonderloid Shambler. We're going to ignore this one, but we are going to get rid of its nearby things. Fungal Child, Fungal Floor. Oh my god. Yeah, these creatures, they're starting to claim this part of the city. Let's close the door behind us. Let's get our aluminum. And for now, for now, we'll just go. Let's take as much of the things that we think we can tear, tear apart. Things that are easy to tear apart. We already know that we can't get rid of. We can't uh, disassemble some of these things. So we're just going to take the things that are that are kind of obvious to us. That are disassemblable. We do have a good amount of aluminum now. A good amount of copper. Steel we don't really need much of because all of the cars nearby are made out of steel. So anything nearby that we care a ton about. There is a bookstore. I would like to fill up and having seen the lightning bolt come from that zapper zombie, Vellum still dreams of being able to create lightning bolts himself. And on top of that, I, I, I want to stay in this area for a little bit longer to sort of investigate how far this infection has gone. Oh, what's that? Sappy scroll. It is... Scroll of Torn Skin. Okay. Not interesting to us. We already have one of those. We do have a shopping cart here. If we find one that's in good repair, we're in the need for extra carrying capacity right now. It looks like this one is the, in the best repair. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to grab this shopping cart and pull it along behind us just so that uh, we can take as much stuff as we can. And we're going to just put a few things in the shopping cart. There's a zombie blank and a grabber zombie up ahead. We won't need our powers to take care of the zombie blank. So what we're going to do is we're going to magic missile, magic missile the grappler zombie a few times just to soften him up. We saw for just a moment there as the grappler zombie grabbed a hold of Vellum and started to pull him back towards the other horde. We can see what these grapplers want to do. So the plan here is to head to the bookstore with this shopping cart. And this is just going to be a test run. We're going to put like one item, one item in the shopping cart and see how things go. See if we can take the shopping cart with us whenever we gate back to the tower. Because if we can, a thing like the shopping cart or even maybe something better than the shopping cart in the future would be pretty good. I also was thinking about how I was thinking about how these downspouts that these houses had aluminum near them. And I'm curious if these downspouts are made out of aluminum. So what I actually am going to do is I'm just going to crash it for scrap aluminum. That is actually amazing. We'll pull our spear back out because the screamer is approaching us. Seems like the screamer got something off right before we actually managed to take it out. But we are getting a lot of scrap aluminum. And in fact, we're just going to put the scrap aluminum in the cart there. But knowing this, knowing that the downspouts, that's the, the drainage systems of these houses, zombie hunter. The drainage systems of these house, houses are made out of aluminum. Gives us an incredible source of aluminum. Much closer to home than we thought it was previously. Which just means that uh, copper has actually become our main need again. Treaties and magical elements. Does have a new mega spell, Gravity Well, in it. Something we'll have to take a look at. Okay, let's see what we can find here. And then, honestly, get out of here as quickly, quickly as possible. Mostly just finding books that we won't really care too much about. Things that uh, are non-fiction or, or cooking books or things that we've already read before. It's starting to get more and more rare for Vellum to find books in the apocalypse that he hasn't already 
acquired. Yeah, unfortunately, this bookstore was more or less a bust. We did find one book that we care about, but that's about it. Okay, with a little bit of aluminum in our cart, we only have it grabbed, so I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to cast gates and go to the Academy Tower. And yeah, it looks like we cannot teleport with the cart. So what we could do then is we could bring the cart back to one of our gate locations and do it that way. We could basically just leave it there in order to be ready to use it. So this treaty on magical elements, let's go ahead and turn our, our light on super fast and take a oop, that's the wrong book. Let's take a look at it. So we have gravity well. Summons a well of gravity targeted on the centered location, dealing bashing damage to all creatures in the affected area. We have a new area of effect spell. Uh, it has a much higher cast cost and a much higher cast time, but it seems like it's going to be a Magus level fireball sort of thing. The only problem is that the cast time is like six seconds. That's that's very, very long, but we will learn it just to have learned it and um, take a look at it whenever, uh, whenever we can here. Okay, so let's take a look at this gravity well. At base level, Oh, wow. It goes up to level 20 and its base damage is 22. It's a level 10 difficulty spell. Yeah. It takes six seconds to cast, though. That's the big thing. That still might be a very good spell, though. We'll have to uh, practice that. Probably practice it by reading the book, though. Okay. We are going to... Actually, we're going to take our gas mask off. If we go to that part of town, though, we're probably going to need to leave our gas mask on at all times just because the chance that we run into another fungaloid is so high. I do want to go ahead and mark the map. And I was looking at the map. I do notice that Vellum actually found a fungal bloom off in the distance, some sort of massive fungal tower. And we are going to go ahead and mark that this part of the town, this part of the city is being taken over by the fungal bloom. So what are we missing? It looks like, yeah, it looks like at this point, our limiting factor is honestly just copper. We are up to uh, 32 chunks of, of bronze at this point. See if we can disassemble some stuff. Looks like we can take apart copper wire for copper, which is apparently an incredibly time intensive activity. Vellum has already spent two hours just stripping copper wire here. We don't really need to disassemble the ch chunks of aluminum, but we can disassemble the the rings and bracelets here the rings were not really worth it but the bracelets were okay we did get a bunch more copper by doing that so we can go ahead and make only two more chunks that's unfortunate Thumbs will take the night the rest of the night and the rest of the morning in order to repair his spear repair his armor get some food in him and uh once all of that is done we'll see about heading back out for more copper. Now that we have a source of aluminum, we'll probably hit the nearby houses here for the aluminum that is on them. And copper is going to be our biggest issue. As we were exploring our tower, heading up to check out some things, we notice out the window, there is a new type of zombie that has wandered nearby, a Zool zombie. This four-legged armored dinosaur corpse has horns on the head and large spikes and rows along the back and side. Its eyes ooze putrid black tears. Uh, I think we want to just straight up not deal with that right now. That sounds like a good answer to just not deal with that. And uh, we're going to go to bed and hope it doesn't find us in here. It, it would be pretty hard to find us, but having seen that and having seen some of the other dangers of the apocalypse, Velum is starting to think that perhaps even more defenses around his tower may be warranted. Perhaps even a full moat. But for now, that will be a concern for tomorrow as we plug in our earplugs and try to go to sleep. After a session of resting and recuperating, we... and, uh... Slightly improving our defenses outside. We we added a little bit more of a hole up here. We're going to leave this as our main thoroughfare on how to get in and out of the tower. And we will, over the course of the next few days to weeks, make kind of an, an area all around us that is designed to be able to, how do you say, defend against things that we don't really want to have to deal with. We are going to refill our uh, fireball wand with some crystallized mana because this fireball wand has been incredibly useful 
we're actually probably going to leave behind the Wand of Mass and Magisiles, because whenever we use it on a creature, we realize very quickly that it doesn't really do any damage at all compared to our own magic missiles, which are already pretty cheap. And even in an emergency, it's going to take a lot of time to take anything down with that. So we're not going to worry about it. Uh, we are going to probably spend a little bit more time. We are probably going to spend just a little bit more time reading just to get to a little bit later at night and to rest up from some of the um, exertion that we had while we were getting food and, and, and doing some labor around the place. And as we were doing that, we did, in fact, get another level in Cause Bear. It's getting to the point where it's very, very close to being castable for us now. So probably just relax so that whenever we, whenever Vellum goes back out into the field looking for copper, we'll, we will be about as well rested as we can get. Minus mana. We are missing a lot of mana, unfortunately. Okay. So, recycling centers were good for aluminum, but not as good as anything else can be. Gun stores are probably going to be the next best thing. There's actually a series of gun stores right around here by the southern southern bridge gates. And I think there was a bunch of gun stores nearby as well. Yeah, these red markers on the map are the gun stores. I think we will gate over to the southern bridge gates and start hitting all of the gun stores nearby for copper. Okay, pull out our knife spear, which we did manage to get fully repaired again. And uh, let's get moving. So the first one we're going to head towards is the one to the north here. We did uh, see another one of those lightning zombies uh, over here. So we want to be careful. Oh yeah, there's like a full horde up here. They are on the other side of a fence right now though. So we're going to take this moment to just take out as many of them as possible. Just slicing through them as they get stuck on the fence. Using the spear to just poke through over and over. Yeah, that would have actually been potentially slightly... Ooh. Cherry tree? Apricot tree? Oh, this is an orchard. I actually hadn't thought to check out orchards yet. But as Vellum sees these trees, he, like... His mouth waters a little bit, remembering that fresh fruit can be had again. His home used to have orchards in them, and fresh fruit was the name of the game whenever it came to eating for the elves. So much time and cataclysm has made it so that he just sits there, slowly b biting away at some peaches and apricots, while the sounds of the undead rattle on in the, in the distance. They don't really bother us anymore, though. We know that there's not too many things. Oh, what the hell happened here? There's some sort of sand barricade. We may have spoken too soon here. Something took out an absolute ton of zombies here. Well, whatever it was seems to have fallen to an incandescent husk. A creature that we do not want to mess with. Apparently some sort of oh there's a minefield and I've been hearing EMP blasts blasting off. I think there is some sort of military checkpoint up there that these zombies are currently attacking. We're just going to sneak in behind them here and crush down the, the zombies that are left behind. Okay the temptation is too high. Look at the size. Look at the size of that horde. Okay we have to do it. Pull out the Wonder Fireballs again. Actually, before we pull out the Wonder Fireballs, we're going to put that in a spear, a spear strap. And I want to try Gravity Well just once because they don't see us yet. Oh, it's not that big. Okay. And we lost concentration anyways. Screw that. Wonder Fireballs. Can we get it like right at the center of this horde? We do want to get the edge that's closest to us, but we also want to get as many of them as possible. And with an explosion, we hear the sound of crackling thunder and fire and screaming as dozens of zombies go down to one fireball. And we are going to send another one out. One runner did make it out of the pack, did catch wind of us. What the hell is that thing? A swarming amalgamation of small flat creature dashing around and rattling on seven short legs. I think I've seen one of these before. 
and a huge boomer. This boomer, normally swollen and ready to burst, has strengthened and solidified. The bio dribbling from its mouth also seems to have changed. Okay, I don't like that. We are going to, uh... What, a mana bolt? And as we hit it with a mana bolt, it really has strengthened and solidified. It barely took any damage from that mana bolt. We seem to have entered this horde. Uh, let's see. We're done a mana bolt again. I would like to take out that boomer if possible. And finally, we take it out. And just as we do, we do notice that what might be the master of this horde is in the distance. A fellow caster of magic. A zombie necromancer. Another new creature in the horde as well. An ashen brawler, a gigantic, twisted human frame with a menacing stance and rapid movements. Thick clouds of smoke pour from violent looking eviscerations spread across its muscular body, and its peers have seemed to have elongated massively. Uh, yeah, we're just going to pull out the Wonder Fireballs again. It is kind of like an answer to a lot of our prayers right now. Uh, yeah, we're just going to toss it behind us. Behind them, that is. And start running. Because that Ashen Brawler just got very, very close. Take down one of them there. We do he still hear zombies being taken down at every moment. Probably by the fires that were left behind. Uh, seeing all that smoke, we are going to um, put our gas mask on. Probably something we should do at all times now. Will our night eyes let us see through? No. They don't really let us see through the smoke any better. The destruction, though, that we just brought. As Vellum steps into the smoke cloud, to try and just get rid of a few of these corpses. What's happening, actually? Hold on. I think the corpses are getting back up. That, that necromancer. That zombie that we hit, whenever we hit it, it had a dinging sound. A rust zombie. Another explosion to the north. Something, possibly the Snot Gobbler. And another one gets up. Okay. The zombie necromancer has to go. I think he's resurrecting them. Because they're just getting up next to me. Fat zombie trumpet struggles to stand. Yeah, as we checked to, to watch to see what we had seen, we had felt strange pulses and see weird hand signs. Hand signs that Vellum recognizes as magic. Zombies are not created from magic. Not really. There's something else going on, but the zombie necromancer is using magic to reanimate them after I take them down. Well, you want to see magic? I'll show you magic. The rust zombie is already up again. We're going to send a fireball at the zombie necromancer. Setting it on fire. And with another one, it goes down. You might be a necromancer, but we are an Archmage. And despite being an Archmage, we have in fact gotten far too close to some raging fires and we're going to back off for a bit. Okay, ow, 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 ow. As we did in fact just burn most of our body from the fire. Ah, the rush of adrenaline from taking down a horde that big um, may have been a little bit too much. And of course, even now that the uh, horde is down, the nearby stragglers are going to slowly move in. Ooh, okay. Um, we're going to take some antibiotics and we're going to bandage every single body part we have now because that was pretty stupid to wade into the fire like that. And we're actually going to fall back and even, you know, pick a peach tree and kind of have a snack real quick of some more peaches. Something that makes Melum very, very happy again to remember the fruit trees of his elven home. Now that, now that is a lot of destruction. It does look like there was, yeah, some sort of camp or something beyond all of this. I also want to, uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to grab this rust zombie and we're going to haul it back into the dark here. And I'm curious, we're going to uh, put on our reading light real quick. Not like things can't see us anyways. 
And we're going to um, do a do a quick butch butchery of the rust zombie. And we're going to see if we can get anything out of it. Let's see. Innards, fat, bone marrow, scrap metal. I was right. Chunks of steel. Yeah. This thing seems to have combined itself with some of the nearby metal and made itself more than zombie in a little bit of of solid object as well. We find things like that in the future, but we'll want to keep in mind that we can dissect them. Are there any zombies left in this in this horde of dead over here? It doesn't appear so, but there's also a raging fire over there now. We have we have finally learned what the real threat is whenever it comes to those zombie necromancers though is that in the middle of a horde the zombie necromancer is more than capable of keeping the horde alive and keeping the horde moving for now we're gonna leave it alone we move into an electronosaur to the north hoping for some copper looks like we can get a lot of copper wire here hopefully i can get some actual copper copper as well and uh we'll Swing back around whenever we think that the fire has mostly died down. There's some sort of street market here that we just came across. Yeah, interesting. Like little tent stalls. We might want to go through this real quick because there might be some surprising or unexpected things here. At least some food. Vellum's kind of almost always in a state of needing more food as farming isn't exactly something that he's terribly interested in. He knows intellectually that getting more food and and getting food consistent is an element of survival in the wasteland. But, and as we step into the store, a zombie immediately comes around this corner. But with so many houses nearby, we prefer exploration over farming. Okay. Does this gun store, looks like a, this gun store is a shooting range, but does it have a forge? Not sure, but we do see some ingots on the ground. Too dark to see what kind they are yet. Lead. Uh, we'll still take them because we can use lead. Because we don't need much lead. We can use lead to, um, for our fault mending chance to repair our gear. We're going to just reapply some bandages real quick and make sure that we're good to go. We're going to go ahead and actually just mark that one off now. So the next gun store is down here. We may check some buildings along the way as well. In our current state, we probably want to be a little bit more cautious. Those, the burns from the fa fire are going to slow us down, unfortunately. We do pass a pawn shop on the way, and it looks like we've already checked this pawn shop, but there might be a good chance that there is stuff in here we didn't know was valuable before. And we do immediately spot that there is some silver on one of these shelves that we didn't actually get access to before. So we're going to quickly try and lockpick this shelf. And we do it in one trot. A hundred silver. Heck yes. Okay. And it looks like there is a silver, another display right here with some more silver in it. Right about now, we were really wishing for some sort of spell to be able to... Uh, break things open as we did in fact I think just break our last lot pick yeah we just broke our last lot pick all of this recent work has made us quite hungry so we're going to finish off the rest of the food that we actually like and there is a shrieker zombie in here that is something that needs to be dealt with we don't see any more copper in here so for now we're just going to move on Taking advantage of summer, we do actually stop to pick some <laughs> blackberry and, and raspberry bushes. There's almost a comicalness to to imagining Vellum going around and just picking berry bushes while there is clearly a horde not even that far away from where we are right now. As it's just it's become so common for him to see zombies that it doesn't even slow him down or even stop him to even notice that there are zombies nearby as we do just move through all of this very, very quickly. We did find another electronic store. We're going to very quickly just check for anything copper here, kind of like this copper wire here. And uh, even though the copper wire does take a very long time to disassemble down into usable copper, it is better than not having any copper at all. And we're sure that a lot of these things could probably be disassembled for copper as well, but the problem is that uh, Vellum's understanding of electronics is so incredibly crude and bad that 
we're not even 100% sure what is made out of copper. As Vellum is looting one of the houses, only a few meters away from the gun store now, he spots another disluted devourer out the window, and it really shows how much has changed in the last two weeks as he sees the devourer, but just sits here and eats berries and knows that it's not even that much of an issue anymore. It did seem to have smelled him, though, so we're going to have to take it down. It's already bleeding as we slice pieces off of it, and it's down. It's just that easy. It's hard to imagine whether we've grown that strong, or if maybe they weren't that scary in the first place. Perhaps we have overestimated our enemy. A simple phase. Enter the gun store. This place is a mess. Looks like, like many gun stores, it has been completely torn through. Few zombies in here. Not much to speak of. We're not really seeing anything in the way of the kind of supplies. Oh, here we go. There we go. We finally found a back room, and immediately we see a pile of 200 copper ingots. And even more. There we go. Already we have a pretty significant uh, haul, and in fact, we're almost already overweight. I did notice that uh, we're starting to. Uh, have quite a bad level of focus here. It's probably because we, we were having our, our steps going the whole time. It's something that I would like to keep going is keeping our our steps going. But the problem is that it, it's so costly on our focus and we need our focus to cast spells that we really kind of can't have it going all the time. It's probably something we want to just activate whenever we are going to be taking down a horde because having the extended stride is far less stamina costly than trying to run all the time. Go ahead and mark that one off. And a very quick check of our surroundings shows that at least within this block, there isn't... Oh, I was just about to say there isn't much. However, there is a bank. And that's actually something that after seeing that uh, bank car and the amount of gold that the bank car had, something that Vellum had been considering is, well, frankly robbing a bank because we need gold and silver right and these humans kept all of their gold and silver in banks back in the day they used them as money which is sort of a silly proposition to vellum but still a true thing a few zombies down not even worth mentioning we're going to go ahead and what is that guy a zombie technician interesting he immediately moves up to grab us and we gouge him straight through the eye and the face, slicing the pieces, and just move on. Okay, what's in here? Looks like a bunch of books, some sort of office. This is the bank, right? Okay. Let's see if we can find the vault, if there is one. Ooh, hey, there's actually some healthy food here. Some oranges and some yogurt. Is there no vault here? Oh, here we go. So there's a computer console and some sort of metal closed door. Can we just... We can't, we can't phase through the door. What about the wall? Hmm, no. What about going around? So it looks like the vault wall might actually be too thick for Velm to phase through. Did, did they think of everything? You know what they might not have thought of? As we s sit and meditate on this for a moment. There's always some weakness. We are going to phase... Up to the roof, move over, and phase back down. And, yep, that was it. That was the weakness. They thought of everything other than to make the roof thick. It does look, unfortunately, though, that, like, there's just a bunch of safes in here. And, I mean, it's possible for us to get this safe open, but not easy. And it's definitely not something that we're actually skilled at doing. Not as much gold and silver in here as we thought. Not without getting these safes open, that at least. I don't think we really have anything that we can use to help us with this. So we're just going to phase back to the roof. And uh, keep in mind that maybe in the future, if we find a way to get into banks more easily, this might be a good thing to, to, to do. We're going to use our memory to remember where a good place to phase is and head back down to the first floor. We're so close now. So close to having the amount of copper that we need. 
that it is tantalizing, constantly driving us forward. Uh, we are going to just go ahead and pick out another gun store nearby and start moving towards it. Of course, just kind of grabbing some of the food we find along the way. We have learned with our cooking skills that just because something isn't visibly edible in its current form doesn't mean it's not completely useful. I to actually avoid that hunter. Although we could take it down. In fact, actually, we are going to take it down. We're going to take it down like this, though. We are going to wind strike it. And as soon as it gets not to the ground, slice it down. That's a really nice one-two punch that we have there. And as we're moving along, Vellum does catch sight of another electrified Eldritch evolution. A shocker brute. Huge beast covered in visible scarring from the lightning bolts that arc out of his body. Being near it, you can hear slight humming like that of an electrical transformer. His emotions are weird. They're not what you would expect. Instead of fear or concern, Vellum feels a pang of jealousy. He knows that Storm Shapers are infamous for being able to call down thunder and lightning, but despite that, he has not found any of the more notorious spells. And seeing something that is able to control lightning so naturally like that does bring us a pang of jealousy. And pick that tree. Too heavy to pick up, really. Okay, we'll cast Odor Strength on ourselves for now, I guess. That is what that's for. It's still too heavy. Uh, it just took a second for the Odor Strength to kick in. We'll have to keep that in mind. We'll need to cast that beforehand. It's humorous to think that a handful of apricots were too heavy to pick up. And as soon as we get in here, we immediately see a thorny shambler. And we wind strike from here. Oh, we don't have mana. Okay. We do quickly take it down, though. And a snot gobbler. Thank God we were still wearing our gas mask as the snot gobbler explodes into bile, covering our eyes. Um, do we have any... We don't have any gauzes or anything that we can use. We're going to just hold in the darkness for a moment here. Actually, can we use our night eyes to see further? Not sure if that actually worked or if... Okay. It didn't work at just the snot effect on our eyes had finally worn off. And this gun store is just loaded with undead. Oh, the snot gobbler did just explode, so I bet the undead are coming in from outside. We've kind of lost our advantage here. Looks like there's some lead here. Is there any copper nearby? We don't see any. Let's go, let's head to the back rooms. As soon as we head back into the back rooms, a thorny shambler surprises us from one of the back rooms and gets a shot off, bleeding our torso. Ugh. Elm just calmly puts tor uh, pressure on the wounds, ignoring the blood dripping from him. It's not like this is the first time we've bled. And, uh, we'll just do a quick search. Like, there's a shooting range back here. There's no forge here. They weren't making amu ammunition here. We don't see any copper whatsoever. And our odor strength is probably going to run out sometime soon as well. In fact, that actually already has run out. So I think it might be time to call this journey. We'll go ahead and uh, close that door there. Rest up against the door and think about how much copper he's silver and everything he's got in this time. We're not exactly happy with this trip as our confidence and our arrogance did make us get honestly quite injured. And there were some risky moments there for sure. But at the end of the day, we did still get a lot of what we need. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and check. Put away our spear. How much bronze can we make? All of that. All of that for only eight chunks of bronze. Sitting at 42 chunks of bronze, just around half now. We're getting closer all the time to getting the amount that we need to get our our forge up and running, but it definitely is slow going and it's taking us across the entirety of the apocalypse and taking us past hordes of enemies that are a lot stronger than we remember them being. The, the progression of difficulty here has, has really, really gotten out of hand and we're starting to actually have problems again. We'll take care of uh, our inventory for a moment then. To be honest, it's probably a good time 
for us. For Vellum. Take a break. Just gonna start a fire. See what food, if anything. Just kind of look through our recipe book. See what food, if anything, we can make. Um, a baked potato. That sounds really nice. Something nice and warming. As he sits down to eat and thinks about our past and our future. We are so close to having bronze and from then we will almost immediately be able to thrust ourselves into be able to making steel weapons and maybe even steel armor replacing possibly even our chainmail but as we've been searching for this bronze searching for this anvil we have realized how strong we are but also how strong and difficult the cataclysm has come we have become incredibly powerful but the cataclysm has kept up with us this arms race has never ended we look forward to being able to enchant, enchant a spear because we've seen how good we've gotten with a spear. Our piercing skills have ascended into a level of being able to almost never worry about missing. And, you know, we, we have an incredible familiarity with the spear as well. Getting an enchanted spear, a plus one or even a plus two enchanted spear is going to make us a unstoppable force. And with thinking about the unstoppable force, Vellum dares to imagine a goal that he had a while ago. Perhaps there are dragons in this world, and perhaps we could slay one. And with that, we'll have to leave you there. I have been Orima, and this has been Cataclysm, Dark Days Ahead, The Journey of Vellum. If you have enjoyed, please feel free to leave a like and comment, and if you want to see more, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.